This is called the United Kingdom facade. On the top is the gold buyout. Silver unicorn, which is the symbol of Scotland. That was the United Kingdom in 1713 when the building was built. Tak, nie było możliwości innego dnia wybrać, bo my tylko przyszliśmy na jeden dzień do portu, do Kostanu. Tak, kapitan mówi, rano będzie pogoda, a deszcz po południu, a tu jest o, 15 po 11. Leje to jest oberwanie chmury. W Polsce to jest oberwanie chmury. Jeszcze mieliśmy możliwości wybrać wycieczkę. Czy ty no. Ja chciałem otwartym. Let's a warm day. Żeby otwartym, żeby oglądać miasto. Tak zwane sightseeing. O, wszyscy parasolki. O, jak mokną ludzie. In just a moment we'll be taking a left hand turn onto Tremont Street. Tremont is French for three hills. We used to have three hills here in Boston. Pemberton, Mount Vernon, and Beacon Hill. We only have one hill left, Beacon Hill. The other two are taken down and used as landfill. And Beacon Hill today, in fact, is 50 feet shorter than it was during the colonial period. The top 50 feet was also used as landfill. Coming up on the right side, the end of this building, you'll see a gold tea kettle. And if you look very closely, you see some steam coming out of the gold tea kettle. Today it sits on top of a Starbucks, but the tea kettle has been there a lot longer, over 150 years. It originally was the, the logo of a company called the East India Tea Company. Now, as I mentioned earlier, for 50 years, Boston was completely self-governing. It wasn't until the 1680s that the restored monarchy under King James II appointed the first royal governor to the Massachusetts Bay Colony. His name was Governor Andros. And when Governor Andros arrived here in Boston in the Puritan Colony, one of his top priorities at that time was to establish a Church of England church in the Puritan Colony. None of the Puritans would sell him land for that purpose. So Governor Andros decided to expropriate a corner of the first burial ground here in Boston, which is coming up now on the left side. Expropriated a corner of the burial ground and built the King's Chapel here. So you see the building, classic looking building, coming up now on the left side in front of us, the King's Chapel on the corner of the burial ground. Also on the opposite corner, just beyond the King's Chapel, the Parker House Hotel. It's America's oldest operating hotel, now part of the Omni chain. Here, Parker House Rolls and Boston Cream Pie were invented. And if you look in the window, just beyond the main entrance to the Parker House here on the left, you see a picture of Boston Cream Pie as served there and also Parker House Rolls. It's a very delicious cake, actually. There it is right there. Coming up on the right side, another burial ground. This is called the... the uh, <clears throat> granary burying ground and here virtually all the revolutionary leaders are interred right inside the wrought iron railing here on the right is the grave of sam adams the organizer of the revolution you see the, the stone here with the american flag next to it on the right that's sam adams paul revere is way in the back in the middle and John Hancock, who bankrolled all of Sam Adams' schemes against the British government, is on the far left, the tall granite column, where all those people on umbrellas are marching by right now. That's John Hancock's grave. <clears throat> so, whatever happened to our old friends, the Puritans? Does anybody go to the Puritan church in your city or town today? I don't think so. But they're still here. They just don't call themselves Puritans any longer. What happened was, their religion evolved over the centuries. And in the 1700s, we began to see a split in the thinking among the Puritan clergy elite. And that split eventually led to the establishment of what is today, what are today,